Joshua. And the topic that we are going to be looking at is titled Resisting the Devil. Resisting the Devil. <clears throat> and I'm going to, um, I want to assure us this message is going to change your Christian life. If you know, if you can apply it, you know, if you apply it very well, it's going to change your life as a Christian. The reason is that many Christians, unintentionally, we have surrendered to the enemy without a fight. We have surrendered to the devil. Many people don't even realize it, you know. A lot of the times, we even think that we are walking in line with the will of God. Sometimes we think that what we are experiencing is actually God. And the devil likes that. You know, but it is not always so. Whatever you are going through is not always the plan of God for your life. You know, God has good thoughts. He has good plans for you. But the Bible also says that whatever you allow on earth, God is going to allow it in heaven. So if the devil is pressing you down and you don't fight it, well, after all, God will not do anything about it. You still make heaven. You know, many Christians have died before their time. Of course, they are Christians. They will receive a royal burial. Angels will receive them, but it's not their time. That is why we need to know how to resist the enemy. And I pray that the Lord will give us understanding in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I will share um, a story with us. You know, I'm, I've shared that story here, you know, in church so many times before. You know, but for the sake of uh, those who haven't heard it, you know, I'm going to share it again. It's an experience that I had in, um, in the year 2010, around April 2010. You know, we moved over to Canada very late December um, uh, um, 2009 you know, almost, <laughs> almost uh, 2010, January, you know, so um, we, was, we were staying, you know, my wife and I, we didn't have children then, we were staying with a, with a friend, with a family friend, and they're just living in their basement, and of course, you know, by then, we had been married for about 10 years, it's, it was going to the 11th year of our marriage, you know, and of course, we have been trusting God for the fruit of the womb and all that, you know, and uh, so that time, of course, our normal prayer, trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Then, of course, we have been about four months in Canada. I didn't have a job yet. My wife was already working, so I was trusting God for a job. And, of course, we are still staying, you know, with a family friend after about four months of being in Canada. So we wanted the place of our home. So those were my three key prayer points. Now, there was a, a Sunday that I went to church, and, um, you know, I preached about the power of God, you know, how God, you know, how, how, how children of God can manifest God's power, something along that line. I can't remember what the title was, you know, but something along that line. Then, um, that Sunday night, I slept. Early Sunday morning, a demon appeared to me. I mean, this guy was huge, big, black, wearing nothing, just something, you know, around this side. So he appeared to me and he said, he said, I was told that you have been telling everybody that you are very powerful. Of course, I knew that he was referring to the message I just preached yesterday. I was scared when I saw, I mean, this guy, if you see this guy, you'll be scared. So I was really scared and I wanted to run away. But I wanted to buy time. So I just said, who told you that? So that in the process of answering, I will quickly run away. <laughs> so I said, who told you that? And as I was about to run, Three other smaller demons, you know, they now encircled me. So there was no way for me to run. And the guy now wanted to give me a punch just in my belly. And it was, you know, he made to give me that punch. As the punch was about to land, I woke up. And I was scared. In fact, every message that I've been preaching just vanished from my head. And I, began, I was so afraid and I was not saying, Wow. If a demon can still appear to me like that, that means everything I've been preaching is really not true. The power is not really there. And I was really very scared that 
what about all the people that have been telling that the power of God is so strong that when you are in God, you are invincible and all that? So I, in my mind, I was thinking, how will I be able to go and tell people again that all the messages I've been preaching was not correct? That God cannot really protect you as much, that the devil can still come out. And, you know, my mind was so troubled. My wife had gone to work. I was just alone. I was still on bed. So I was really worried. I, know, I was thinking about it. I was still very scared. Then suddenly I heard a voice. God spoke to me. He said, it's your fault. <laughs> now, I was a bit relieved that at least God spoke. But I was very angry with God. I said, how can you say it's my fault? I just preached yesterday. A demon came after me. And you can't do anything about it. And you are saying it's my fault. I said, how is it my fault? Then God asked me, he said, when last did you have spiritual warfare? I said, well, we pray in church. I lead prayers. We fight. God said, no, 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 not that. Your own personal spiritual warfare. When last did you have it? I couldn't give any answer. Because for a very long time then, I had not really had a personal spiritual warfare at home. And God now, then there, there was something God now told me that now made me jump up out of the bed. God now said that that is even why a lot of your blessings that have been released, you haven't received it. Then I was mad. I jumped out of bed. And for the next three days, I was just praying. And that month, my wife conceived. That month, I got a job. That month, we moved out of my family friend's house. Praise the Lord. So, you know, the point I'm just making is that thank God for that experience. Because if I didn't have that experience, there are some understanding that I wouldn't have had. So, the spirit realm is as real as the physical realm. You need to understand that. The spirit realm is very real. Actually, the spirit realm created the physical. I mean, how did God create the world? God created it in the spirit. God is spirit, and he spoke. He said, let there be light, and there was light. Let there be land, let there, all these things that we are seeing today, God created it out of nothing. It was created from the spirit realm. And therefore, all battles, every battle that you will ever face in your life, every battle that are fought, they are decided in the spirit realm before they manifest in the physical. That's where, that, that, in fact, if you don't have victory in the spirit realm, you cannot have victory in the physical realm. The spirit realm is where every battle is fought. That is why, as a believer, if you want to live a victorious life, you must learn how to prevail in the spirit realm. And God has given us several insights into how things operate in the spirit realm. For instance, in 2 Chronicles chapter 18, 2 Chronicles 18, there was a king that was going for a battle. His name was Ahab. And of course, God wanted this guy to go and die in the war because the king, this king had been sinning against God. So God wanted him to go and die in that battle. Now, the king had invited prophets to come and prophesy to him whether he will win the battle or not. Now, God didn't want, God wanted him to go to the war so that he could die there. And God was now asking the angels and the demons that who is going to help me to make sure that this guy will go for this war. And of course, the angels of God couldn't do it. I mean, because they couldn't deceive him. And one other, and a demon was there. The demon now said, I will entice him. And God asked that demon, how will you do it? He said, I'm going to be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets so that they will lie to him. And as a result, that demon put lying spirit in the mouth of the prophet and everybody was telling the king, you go to the war, you are going to win. But the prophet of God was there and he told the king that, look, all these people that, all these prophets that are talking to you, they are, they are using lying spirits. And of course, the king didn't believe him. The king went to the war and eventually he died in the war. 
But it didn't just, I mean, this thing had already been decided in the spirit realm. So God just gave us that insight. And of course, we also know the story in the book of Job, Job chapter 1 and 2. Job was just living his life when Satan had to go to God that, look, this guy, if I tempt him, he's going to curse you to your face. 